All right, next up, guys, we're going to do um, the exporting process, and I need to show you what is probably the most important thing that you should all encounter if you're doing this correctly. Um, the saving process for this file, um, these IMGs is how you save it. Just click on the little disk IMG. Um, you can pick whether it's 8-bit, 16, or 32-bit. Um, don't worry about save active image or save all channels. All channels is for whether or not you're doing masking stuff later. We'll get there um, much later. Um, and then you can just kind of browse for where you want to put it. So I'm going to drop this in my personal folder, which is right char. All right, that works. Um, I'm going to call this uh, the exhibit render A. Probably spelled it wrong. Um, Good enough. All right, so here's kind of like the moment of truth. Um, I'm just going to turn these off for now. But um, when you bring it into Photoshop, it should just snap into place. So let me navigate there. Let's see. Exhibit render A. Boom. Drop it in. It is the right size. It was the right size. Hang on. Let me see something. <coughs> Why did that come in scaled? Hmm. That's funny. Um, let me check something. Alright, I bet there's a funny little setting somewhere that I'm missing that drops things in the wrong size, or to scale to fit. Alright, so I'm going to do um, place embedded. Place embedded is actually placing the file in, it's like using the proper insert settings. Um, but when you go to place embedded, this one should come in at the right size, and it did not. Damn. I've never failed so much in a single class. <sighs> Alright, well, I'll find it. It's there, somewhere. I have videos to prove it. Um, but anyway, uh, what you can do is just drop it in and uh, scale it into place. It doesn't matter if, uh, if you don't do it a proportional scale. I mean, if you really want to test the proportional scale, you can um, drop it into place and then scale it with the shift command. Um, we'll drop that in, go right there, put it here, scroll down a little bit. Um, whoops, hang on, I gotta zoom out. And I zoomed in. All right, let's do this for like the eighth time. Exhibit render A, drop it in, put it here. And if you use your proportional scale, it should scale exactly to that uh, point, and you're good to go. Um, hit enter, and now you've got your image in there. So um, I'll dig into where that silly little setting is, because it really should just drop in and be the exact size. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on it, but anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do next is insert the imagery from our other um, file as well. So if you go to... Um, open up that other file, the Keen Mosaic, it's this right here. Um, you don't need to do a lot with this. Um, you have the mosaic layer is uh, kind of just an image that you can just select and copy. Uh, if you have multiple layers that you worked with, you can uh, select and copy merged and it'll take them all. But all you need to do on this one is just drop it in free transform it and it's totally fine if you scale it and anytime you're going to scale something that goes over these kinds of grids and stuff you would want to um, either snap to it or um, or over
oversize it and then crop it down because this is like an actual like we we chose the dimension of these pixelizations um, I would like you to keep the uh, the pixel line where it is so I'm okay with nudging a little bit you might need to zoom in to make sure that it is exactly on that line right so I just zoomed in and now I need to go down a little more like that <coughs> Okay, so outside of that, if you need to crop the rest of it, uh, you can do a few things. You can select with your selection tool up here and then just hit delete. Or you can select the box you want to keep, right click and go to um, select inverse and hit delete and it'll delete everything outside of what you just selected. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that that is probably recap for you guys. They should be tools that are familiar for you, so I went kind of quick. Um, but what I want you to do for the remainder of this is um, I want you to break it down into a simplified color palette. And I don't mind if you do horizontal breaks or vertical breaks. It depends on what you might want to use it for in your space. But we're going to pick the three um, colors of this pixelization that you like the most. Okay. Um, so it can be, let's see, how far do I have here? I've got... Um, Two and a half, three and a quarter. That's an odd size. This one is three and a half. So we could do one, one quarter. Yeah, it's an odd size too. All right, I'll just do um, there. And there. We need to go over a little bit. Okay, so um, this is actually really easy. I'm just gonna uh, draw a little box here like that with my selection tool. I'm gonna grab my eyedropper. I really like this color. And then you can use your fill tool, which I always forget where it is. Paint bucket, boom. I'll grab uh, the bright blue. paint bucket, boom. And then I want something that's got kind of a base color, so I'm gonna pick one of the tans, uh, uh, like a or like a dark tan brown. Paint bucket, done. Okay, so that is our assignment. What questions do you have? No questions. Okay, so um, the colors, guys, like, I didn't actually, like, go through and review what your mosaics were. Um, I, I, I know some of you came up and asked me about it or asked me to take a look at what you had. It is going to be important that you pick something that has some pop to it, you know, some kind of accent colors in some way. Um, but you're ultimately going to drive... The, the direction of your color exploration through this in our next module, which is happening over the next three weeks. Okay, so pick something that has some fun colorization to it. That's all I have to say about that, I guess. Actually, the, uh, the tan is a little too tan. Actually, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. Let's maybe grab... Something like that. That was too brown. Actually, okay, I like that. I'll go with that. All right. Anyway, uh, so if you guys have any questions with this, um, this is ultimately going to be your um, assignment. So the last thing I will need from all of you is um, saving it. So you obviously need to save your Photoshop file. So this one is um, Keen Exhibit. And then you need to save a PDF. Photoshop PDF. Okay, then you just hit save. And then that's your PDF. Um, 
I'll give you file naming conventions like at the end of class tomorrow or something, or on uh, Thursday when I collect it. Um, but ultimately, you know, that, that's going to be it. And you guys are pretty much already there. Now, the key is, and all of you need to pay attention to this, every single one of you, including Bodor, um, you'll need to run a render for one hour. Okay. Oh, no, 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 it's an hour. But you can work on other stuff during that time. So all of you, I think, between now and Thursday are going to spend at least one hour in a lab, including my class next week. So if you can't get it done before class, you could always just run the render, get everything else done, run the render, and in the background of what we're doing in class next, uh, next class, and then be done with it. Okay, so just... This is like your first, I think, like introduction to having to time manage your renders. And by now you all realize that these renders take a very long time. So for all of our assignments, an hour is probably going to be the absolute minimum you ever render anything after this. For a submittal. You could always do drafts. But. Okay. Any questions about that? Excellent. All right. So um, you're free to continue working on this if you'd like. Um, otherwise, that's uh, all I have for, for tutorials today. If you need me to see like what your views are and stuff and kind of critique what camera angles you have, let me know. I'll be around.